Moncrief on News Talk 106 to 108. Our guest in the studio to kick things off is founder of CityJet and CEO of Rainmaker, Pat Byrne. Pat, good afternoon to you. Hi, Sean. When did you set up CityJet? Set up the company in uh, mid-92. We got our license on Christmas Eve, 93. Did you know anything about running an airline before you decided to embark on that? Not a clue. I'd spent the previous, <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd spent the previous 20 years in financial services and had developed a company which was quite successful oh. and sold uh, my shares in that and, and moved on. Um, I've been interested in aviation, been interested in the airline business. I was always fascinated by its propensity to lose money, so I just had to go and find out how much and how quickly. Yes, right. And, <laughs> and so then when you, you decided, right, you, wanted to, you had been interested, you wanted to set up an airline, uh, presumably then there's a learning curve. Before you even, you know, put your hand in your pocket and invest in this, where do you go to find out what you need to know? Well, I went in off the street to the Department of Transport, as it was then, uh, before the IAA had been set up, and literally asked what a guy had to do to mm. set up an airline. And I came out with quite a pile of ring binder documents and whatever. And I assembled a team, thankfully, of people who knew a little bit more about it than I did. Mm-hmm. And we set about writing the application for our license. So it was a steep learning curve, yeah. Uh, and and was, it just, uh, 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 was it just initially, was it that you wanted to set up an airline or you had a concept for an airline? Or did that have co- you know, come about later on? No, I had the concept. It wasn't just set up an airline for the sake of an airline. Mm. I had the idea about London City Airport. <clears throat> I saw it there as an opportunity. Couldn't believe that it was being ignored by mm. the, the incumbent players. It was a bit of a specialist airfield, all right, required a special type of aircraft and so on. But I actually thought that was a very good opportunity. So it was more the business idea than the burning ambition to have an airline. Yeah, because London City Airport in the centre of London, it's, it's, the, it's the best position. The, I think, as I understand, the disadvantage in London City Airport is the, air, the, air, the runway is quite short. So you, is that what the problem is there or the, the well, restriction uh, is there, if you like? Yeah, well, that's a healthy restriction as far yeah. as uh, CityJet was concerned yeah. because it meant you had to have a special type of aircraft to operate in there. So right. you're never going to operate a very large aircraft. Uh, and that, that sort of made it fairly special or unique. Does that make it economically uh, uh, more challenging, uh, to uh, use the parlance, in the, in, in the sense that the, 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 air, the aircraft can only be a certain size, so that restricts your numbers? It makes it very challenging, combined with the fact that there's a lot of restrictions at London City, especially around weekends in terms of environmental laws and compliance. Mm-hmm. So the airport really is a six-day-a-week airport as opposed to a seven-day-a-week airport. Uh, and, you know, nine o'clock ish at night is really the last, the last flight. So from that point of view, you're kind of time boxed quite a bit. Mm. So, uh, you're also flying into a very expensive piece of real estate. So because the movements are less than they would be at other airports, the airport charges more to recover their economic position. Because you had to use special aircraft, which does that mean your outlay? Well, I imagine the outlay for an airline anyway is going to be huge, but did that make it bigger than normal? didn't make it bigger because the aircraft were not overly expensive, proportionately speaking. Oh. They, were, they, were, they were affordable, uh, you know, 95 seats. So it was affordable for a 95-seat airplane. Uh, but it just meant that you, um, you were restricted in the kind of aircraft you could have. Uh, and you know that aircraft, like all aircraft, it has it had its pati- its peculiarities uh, in terms of maintenance and so on. Uh, and presumably, London City Airport, because it was a relatively new airport, probably would have uh, welcomed you with open arms. In, in in Dublin Airport, was it similar to was it relatively easy or not to get slots and those? No, in Dublin Airport, there wasn't a problem getting slots back at that time. And in fact, in fairness to. Uh, Air Int, as it was in, uh, before it was the DAA, uh, they did welcome us, gave us a lot of support, um, really wanted to have more competition on Dublin London. So mm. uh, in those days, that was quite a healthy thing. Uh, and in London City Airport, was it relatively easy? It was easy to get the slots uh, and they were absolutely mad for someone like us to come in and, and promote the airport. Um, a lot of other carriers have gone in there since, but CityJet would still be the dominant carrier at London City because we fly to a lot of other destinations, not just Dublin, obviously, but we fly to quite a number of destinations out of City Airport. Mm. Um, but yes, we were welcomed very much so because we were, we were actually developing the airport. Uh, was it specifically aimed at business people? It was initially aimed at business people um, because of its proximity to the city. So we found a lot of bankers, insurance, financial services type people uh, found that London City was their choice or their access point of choice really for London because you could get in and get out with relatively hassle free. Mm. Um, so that was important. So initially it was business people. Then it became the choice of people, what we would call premium leisure 
where people who were flying for leisure purposes but didn't want the hassle of Heathrow, Gatwick or Stansted and uh, found the, uh, the the best kept secret of London City Airport. They found out about it. It took a long time for them to find out about it. Not, hmm. not, not because we weren't trying very hard to tell them we were, but uh, it became quite popular then with what it called premium leisure. And why did that take a while for people to find out about it? Uh, I don't know. I think it's uh, people are slow to change their habits. Uh, and especially at the London end, people tend to favour airports that they actually live near mm. uh, rather than, than airports uh, near where they work. It just took time. Uh, I think all of these things take time. People uh, have to hear about it for, for quite a while before it really seeps into their subconscious. Uh, so, uh, some, it's, there's a figure out that something like 90% of airlines lose money or go bust. Um, how come you didn't? Uh, by the grace of God, we didn't. We we tried hard enough to go bust. I have to say, we we did we did test that principle quite often. Yeah, one in ten do fail. Um, our goal was to get it past the first year. We did that, and then it was get past the next six months and so on. So we recapitalized four times mm. uh, in seven years, which was you know pretty pretty much of a record, I think. Yeah, were you lucky to the extent that the kind of the years you started it were the years leading into the upturn in the economy? We were and we weren't. We were we were lucky that the economy was beginning to turn. We were unlucky that our timing was awful. We were just ahead of the internet and we were still mm. massively reliant on travel agents. And in those days, standard commission was 9%. But because we were in a competitive situation, especially with Erlingas, Erlingas were paying 15%. We had to match that. So that became an extremely difficult and painful thing. So even though the business was there, it was expensive to buy it. Mm. it, it there were, I suppose, in, I mean, in, in the mid-90s, it would have been Ryanair and that would have had an impact on Aer Lingus. Was, mm. your, was your business, though, kind of slightly different in that it was slightly more upmarket? Yeah, we never really saw Ryanair as a competitor of ours uh, and they never saw us. Well, we were quite small, but they never saw us as a competitor either. We were after a different market, a different segment of the market. Mm. And... Uh, in the days when people uh, were still allowed to purchase a business class seat, we did extremely well. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays, that's sort of almost a thing of the past, but people now, uh, they do still elect to take CityJet because it saves them time, gets them to where they want to go. Uh, but the business class in, in short haul flying is really uh, on the wane dramatically. The, uh, do you have any interest left in the, uh, or did you sell it all to Air France? Sold it all to Air France, but I'm still the chairman of the board, right. which is, uh, keeps me involved and keeps me interested, which is which is quite nice. Uh, why did you decide to sell? It became a situation where we really couldn't continue on our own, mm. and uh, it was a sale of convenience. Uh, I'd like to say I made a fortune. I didn't. <laughs> uh, it was a sale of convenience because it needed deeper pockets, and Air France were those deeper pockets. To continue on to, to expand the range of where you're going to be flying to. To, to expand what, what, what we were doing. Uh, and also it made sense from Air France's point of view because we were doing a lot of flying for them out of their hub at Charles de Gaulle. Mm. And we were a very cost-effective option for Air France on a number of routes. So from Dublin now to City, you just fly to London City Airport or, or, or do you use London City Airport as a hub to go elsewhere for people? London City is used to, to fly to lots of places. I mean, places like, like Edinburgh, Dundee, Amsterdam... Rotterdam, uh, Antwerp, uh, Florence, uh, and in summertime we do a number of destinations like uh, Toulon uh, and uh, Brieve. Uh, so quite quite a number of destinations like that. Thanks very for coming into us today. That was Pat Byrne, founder of CityJet, CEO of Rainmaker. We'll uh, be back with the news.